Hello everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red, episode 37, one of the last episodes of Pokemon Fire Red. A journey that began a very long time ago is now finally coming to a close. And we're here, right before the Elite Four, but before we begin, let's go ahead and take a look at, not that, that's not what I wanted to do, let's take a look at our Pokemon and see what we have. So, leading our fray, which is going to change, uh, I just want to go ahead and take a look at Topher. Topher, our very own Nidoking, Poison Ground type, is holding the item Leftovers. It's a jolly nature, which is a great... Um, I'm very happy that it's a jolly nature, meaning that its speed is is raised, which is phenomenal. That's good news, bears. Uh, not only is he wearing uh, a or holding a leftovers, which will restore a little bit of health. He has the poison point ability, which poisons foe on contact. Those are his stats. That speed is pretty good. Uh, and here is his move pool: Mega Horn, Shadow Ball, Earth, uh, Rock Slide, and Earthquake. That is going to add some very good type coverage for us. Uh, Nidoking King is going to do very well, I believe. With those attacks, it's worth mentioning that his special attack is not bad with a 95, so if you wanted to give him something like Thunderbolt, you easily could. The next Pokemon that we will look at is Bahamut, our very own Charizard, the Pokemon that we started this journey with. It is a Fire Flying type Pokemon, Rash Nature. It's holding a Citrus Berry. Uh, that will just allow it to recover some health, which is good and will be very useful. Look at those stats. Wonderful, wonderful speed. Very good uh, special attack as well. Our Pokemon is very good with special attack. The Bahamut that we are using has the moves Fly, Dragon Claw, Flamethrower, and Blast Burn. Uh, it wouldn't normally have that Blast Burn there, but Blast Burn's okay. It will hopefully allow us to hit a one-hit KO on enemies that normally wouldn't. Uh, if we can outspeed them and take them down before they can take us out, we will win. I also replaced Wing Attack for Fly, uh, because Fly is a little bit more powerful um, and I am hoping that we'll be able to one-hit KO some of the more powerful fighting types that we'll be going against. Next, uh, that is not who we have next. Next, we have Bruce. Bruce, our Hitmonlee! This Pokemon is a hardy nature. It is holding an amulet coin just to get that extra money. Uh, I didn't really have anything that I felt like Hitmonlee needed. His stats, his, uh, his attack is huge at 188. His speed is okay at 123. He has the limber ability, meaning that he will not be paralyzed. Bruce has the moves Double Edge, Rock Smash, Brick Break, and Focus Punch. Focus Punch is 150 base power with a 100 accuracy move. That's huge. But more importantly, that is also, if it hit, gets hit first, it will flinch. So you attack last. Uh, we are going to be using this in the fight that we're about to do, uh, and I'm hoping to great effect. Next, we will look at Luna. Luna, our very own Shiny Clefable, is a normal type in this game, holding Leftovers now. Brave Nature, not that that matters. Uh, that Leftovers is going to just help that sustain a little bit more. Now, she's not as great as I would like her in the tank levels, but her health is pretty big. Her defense is 96, not that great, but her special defense of 119 is pretty darn good. She also has the cute charm ability, not that big of a deal, uh, and she is female. That is worth keeping in mind for a little bit. She knows the moves Softboiled, Toxic, Strength, and Psychic. That Softboiled is going to allow her to heal up while Toxic is going to take down whatever we're fighting. I also added that Psychic there to capitalize on her okay special attack of 114. That Psychic's actually going to hurt. The next Pokemon we'll look at is our very own Poseidon. This is Vaporeon. Calm Nature, which is great. It is also holding Black Glasses, which will increase the damage of, uh, not Water-type attacks, but Dark-type attacks. That's actually going to be super useful for us. It also has the move, uh, the ability Water Absorb, which will change any Water attack into, uh, HP, which is wonderful. Um, its attack and defense not that great, but that special defense of 145 is through the roof good, and that special attack of 144 is going to be really awesome as well. It knows the moves Ice Beam, Surf, Bite, and Quick Attack. Remember, Bite... Is special in this game. So we're going to be able to use Bite to uh, pretty good effect, especially holding that Dark Glasses against any Psychic types that we might run come across. The final Pokemon on our team is Chu, our very own Raichu that we met in Viridian Forest at level 5. She, uh, He is holding Quick Claw, Hasty Nature, which is good. Uh, those are his stats. Not that great. Uh, that speed is okay, though. Has the static ability. Any Pokemon that hits it will have a chance of getting paralyzed. Now we have the moves. Brick Break, Thunderbolt, Quick Attack, and Thunder Wave. Quick Attack's not that useful, but it will allow us to hopefully... Um, two-hit KO things that might outspeed us. So, and that Brick Break obviously just adds some type coverage. 
Thunderbolt is going to be useful. Thunder Wave. Uh, there are other things that you could give Raichu, but I'm okay with this right now. Now, it's worth mentioning that our attack on Chu is about equal to our special attack. It is worth mentioning as well that I am considering giving Raichu Thunder, uh, which has a 70% accuracy, but I will I know for a fact that it will one-hit KO some Pokemon that I'm a little worried about. So we'll see what ends up happening. We'll see how Chu fares in this battle. If I end up having Thunder, I'll obviously let you guys know. All right, so... That's our team. Now, the Elite Four battles are going to be split into uh, two different videos. So, I wanted to be able to give you guys a full a full list of my team before we began. But I'm also going to be giving you guys a full list of the teams that we are going to be fighting. So, let's go ahead and take on Lorelei, the first of the Elite Four. But first, let's take a look at our team. So Lorelei of the Elite Four is going to focus mostly on using Ice-type Pokémon, but that doesn't mean that Fire-types are going to be what prevails here. As you will see, Dugong! She will always lead with Dugong. It's a Water Ice-type, we've gone over it before. It does have the Thick Fat ability, which means Fire and Ice-type damage will do nothing. They will not damage Dugong at all. Now it does have the moves Surf, Ice Beam, and Hail, and Safeguard. You don't really want that Hail to get off, so I do suggest using something that can capitalize on that weak defense of Dugon that is only an 80 defense. Now, obviously Dugon is weak to fighting, rock, grass, and electric. If you come at Dugon with, say, a Hitmonlee, uh, you might be able to take it down faster than it's able to get that hail off. So I recommend using a fighting type, a rock type, grass, or electric type move on it to really, really hurt it. The next Pokemon that we'll look at is Cloyster. Cloyster has uh, Shell Armor. It cannot be hit by any critical hits whatsoever. Its moveset is Spikes, Dive, Hail, Protect. It's actually not a very good Cloyster. Those Spikes can get annoying, but I don't really think we're going to suffer any type of issue with those. It is a Water Ice type, and its weaknesses are the same as Dugong, that Fighting, Rock, Grass, and Electric. Uh, although, with Cloyster, because of that monstrous physical uh, defense and no special defense, we are going to plan on using Raichu to be able to use Thunderbolt and hopefully take out Cloyster in one hit. The next Pokemon that we'll look at is Jinx. Jinx, we've gone over very recently. It's an Ice Psychic type Pokemon. It does have the ability Oblivious, which means that it will not be infatuated, which is not a big deal. Its move pool is terrible. Double Slap, Ice Punch, Lovely Kiss, and Attract. Do not use a Flying type on Jinx, you will die. Uh, that Ice Punch will hurt real bad. Double Slap, no problem. Lovely Kiss will actually put you to sleep and attract, so you want to make sure that you're actually using a female Pokemon, if you are. Uh, that will actually negate most of what Jinx can do to you. Now, Jinx has very low defense, and is weak to Rock, Steel, uh, those, and Ghost, which are all physical in this game. So we want to, and Bug. So we want to make sure that we hit this thing with those types of moves. Uh, Nidoking with Megahorn is going to be our best bet here, even though that Ice Punch will severely hurt it. I'm thinking that, uh, Megahorn on Nidoking will be able to one-shot Jinx if we are able to outspeed that base 95, uh, which is very, very fast. Next is Slowbro. Uh, Slowbro is another, is a white water psychic, so, uh, it's not an ice type, which is very interesting. It also has the ability Oblivious, and its moveset is Ice Beam, Amnesia, Yawn, and Surf. Obviously, we know what Ice Beam and Surf do. Amnesia raises its uh, defenses, and Yawn will put you to sleep on the following turn. So we want to make sure that we hit this thing with a special attack. You'll notice that its special defense is only 80, whereas its physical defense is 110, and it is weak to Bug, Ghost, Grass, Electric, and Dark. Uh, obviously, our best bet here is to use Raichu. Using Thunderbolt on Slowbro, I'm thinking a two-hit KO is really going to take this thing down. And finally, Lorelei's signature Pokemon, I guess you could say, is her very own Lapras. Lapras is a Water Ice type. It is weak to Fighting, Rock, Grass, and Electric. If we look at its defenses, it has so much health, but we want to try to see if we can focus on maybe, maybe its weak defenses, which means maybe sending out a Hitmonlee and see what we can do with that. That Body Slam, Confuse, Surf, and Ice Beam are able to do some damage. That Confuse Ray is just really annoying. And of course, it does have the ability Water Absorb, so don't hit Lapras with water attacks whatsoever. So our main stars in this battle are going to be Hitmonlee and Raichu. Let's see what we can do. Welcome to the Pokemon League. I am Lorelei of the Elite Four. No one can best me when it comes to icy Pokemon. Freezing moves are powerful. Your Pokemon will be at my mercy when they are frozen solid. <laughs> are you ready? Alright, so her first Pokemon, of course, is going to be Dugong, just like I said. 
Elite Four Lorelei is going to send out her dugong. We are going to start with our own level 55. All of our Pokemon are level 55. Hers is level 52, so we actually outspeed it. We are going to start with Focus Punch. My hope here is that... My hope here... Damn it! I was hoping that uh, it was going to use Hail um, or something that wasn't going to wasn't going to lose. So, unfortunately, we will be hit there, but that's okay. We're going to hit with Brick Break. My hope here is that this will be able to kill Dugong. Now, of course, we easily, easily... Yeah! All right, one hit, one kill. That's great. I was kind of hoping that we would uh, we would one hit one hit KO that. Next is going to be Slowbro. Now, for Slowbro, we are going to switch to the one and only, the one and only Chew. Just like I said before, uh, its physical defense is a little too bulky for me, so I would rather switch to Chew and see if we can two hit KO it with a Thunderbolt attack. Now, if you have Thunder, the chances are that you might get it. Obviously, we're going to outspeed Slowbro, so let's hope that this doesn't push it into the red. Uh, we will be able to almost one-shot that Slowbro. Almost. Oh, so close, guys. So close. It's going to hit us with a Surf, which is going to do about half. He's going... Uh, Lorelei's going to use a full Restore. All of the Elite Four are going to use a full Restore. Let's hope that we got the low end on that Thunderbolt. If it's possible that uh, Raichu can one-hit KO a Slowbro with Thunderbolt, then I'm not worried at all. It's, nope, we got the high end. So we're going to use uh, Thunderbolt again. Easy peasy because it used full restore, so it lost out on that turn. Slowbro, Water Psychic is going to go down level 52 to our level 55, Chew. Chew, I love you. You're going to be so useful in this game. Next is going to be a Cloister. We're going to stay in for a Cloister because, again, that physical defense stat is just so huge. I want to make sure that we can take it down. It's going to start off with a Protect. That's okay. It's okay. I'm not even worried. Not even worried. Not even worried. Uh, we will, I assume... Oh, wow, that double Protect. That double Protect spam. Lorelei, you son of a gun. All right, we'll go ahead, use Thunderbolt, finally get it off. That should kill Cloyster in one hit. I would be absolutely amazed if it doesn't. Um, but, all right, perfect, great. I was sweat my own words there for a second, you know what I'm saying? All right, we will get a ton of experience for that. Now, Jinx is going to come out. Jinx, being an Ice Psychic type, means that we're going to try to switch to, uh, we're going to try to switch to Topher here. I think Topher will be able to do reasonably okay here. We don't want to hit Jinx with any special attack whatsoever. I'm hoping we can outspeed Jinx. We were able to outspeed Jinx. Mega Horn will absolutely kill her. Uh, her de physical defense is super frail. There we go. Down goes Jinx. I was worried about that Ice Punch coming out and killing Topher. It didn't happen, though. Didn't happen. All right, next is going to be Lapras. Yes, we are going to switch. We are actually going to switch to Bruce, though. Uh, my hope is that... Lapras won't attack us on this turn, and we'll be able to use the Focus Punch, and we might be able to one-shot this Lapras. It's just what I'm hoping. I don't know if it's totally going to ha happen. This is a huge gamble. Uh, it's going to hit us with Body Slam. I should have known that that was going to happen. Um, not going to do that much damage towards us, though. We're going to hit with Brick Break. This isn't going to kill Lapras, but it is going to probably take it down to about half. Uh, even more than half. Oh my god, we got a crit. We got a crit. Down goes Lorelei. That's amazing. I was not expecting that. We just defeated the first member of the Elite Four, and it went so smooth. Things shouldn't be this way. We will get 10,800 Poké Dollars for winning. That's because we have the Amulet Coin. You're better than I thought. Go on ahead. You only got a taste of the Pokémon League's tap power. All right. Well, I'm going to heal up off screen real quick. All right. Now, let's take a look at Bruno's team. Bruno, the second of the Elite Four, is going to be the absolute hardest for us. Now, it's going to start off with an Onyx, which is great for us. It's got the ability Rockhead, so it will take no damage uh, from recoil attacks. It doesn't even have any recoil attacks. Its moves are Roar, Iron Tail, Earthquake, and Rock Tomb. You will notice that all of his Pokemon have Rock Tomb. This is a Fighting Elite Four, which is weak to Flying. That we can't use because of Rock Tomb. It's so annoying. Onyx is obviously a rock ground type with an incredibly high physical defense, but no special defense. It is weak to fighting, ground, steel, water, four times, grass, four times, and ice. So we are going to obviously counter this thing with Vaporeon. I'm thinking one Surf will be able to knock this thing out super quickly. And the same with his second Onyx. Now this is his second Onyx, it has the same ability, obviously weak to the same stuff, but it has different moves. It has sa Sand Tomb and Double Edge. So this one is going to hurt you with Double Edge uh, and won't receive any recoil damage, but I really don't think Onyx and whatnot are a thing that we have to worry about if you have a Grass-type or a Water-type on your team. Maybe Hitmonchan, a pure fighting-type Pokemon, 
only has two weaknesses, Flying and Psychic. Now we know why I gave Clefable Psychic. Uh, it knows the moves Sky Uppercut, Rock Tomb, Mac Punch, and Counter. So unfortunately Clefable will take a ton of damage from him, but I'm also hoping that maybe um, we'll use something else to kind of figure this out. So he does have the ability Keen Eye, so you can't lower his accuracy. What I would suggest doing is actually using, uh, and what I'm going to be doing is using Bahamut to use flying type attacks against Hitmonchan because his defense is only 79, whereas his special defense is 110, it doesn't actually make sense to use Psychic against Hitmonchan. However, it does make sense to potentially use Psychic against Hitmon Lee, who has a speed of 87 and knows the moves Mega Kick, Foresight, Facade, and Brick Break, and the ability um, uh, Limber, so it can't be paralyzed. That's actually important for Luna because that means it can only be hit by Brick Break, and I do believe that even though Hitmonlee has such a massive attack stat, I personally believe that Hitmonlee uh, will go down to Luna's Psychic hopefully before Luna goes down to his Brick Break. Next is his final Pokemon, which is Machamp. Again, a pure fighting type with the only weaknesses being Flying and Psychic. I don't know what to do against Machamp. I have no idea what to do. This is going to be a really hard Pokemon. It knows Bulk Up, which will raise its attack, which is not good. Cross Chop, cross chop Scary Face, and Rock Tomb, and has the ability Gut, so do not put any status conditions on this Pokemon whatsoever. It is slow. So my hope is that we hit this thing hard enough to shut it down. Now, its defense is lower than its special defense, so we're going to be focusing on Bahamut here to try to take it down. If Bahamut is hit by Rock Tomb, Bahamut dies. And we'll have to have another Pokemon come in and clean up. Uh, this is going to be a tough fight. All right, so now I put our Poseidon in front. Let's go take on Bruno. I am Bruno of the Elite Four. Through rigorous training, people in Pokemon can become stronger without limit. I've lived and trained with my fighting Pokemon, and that will never change. Cory, we will grind you down with our superior power. Hoo-ha! All right, dude, let's go. Let's go. Now, he's always going to start with this Onyx, which is good for us because uh, our Poseidon's going to be able to crush it. That quad weakness to water, I'm not worried about Onyx. Honestly, if you have a grass type or a water type, you shouldn't be worried about Onyx. Level 51, we already out-level it. We're going to hit it with a Surf, and goodbye, Onyx. Onyx is literally dead. That's it. Didn't even have to worry about it. See ya, Onyx. Love ya. And we will get a ton, uh, not a ton of experience, but pretty good experience now is when things are going to get interesting. So he's going to send out a Hitmonchan. Hitmonchan actually has a very high special defense. So we are going to switch to Bahamut, who's going to be able to um, one outspeed Hitmonchan and hopefully hit it with a Stab Fly, which should be enough damage, I'm hoping, to one-hit KO this Hitmonchan. Now, we knew Rock Tomb was gonna come because that's just that's just how Hitmonchan is going to roll. Obviously, that Rock Tomb, yes! Oh, baby! I knew it was gonna happen. I knew it was gonna happen. So we were able to take down, uh, he's going to switch right away to his Machamp. This is when I'm getting a little worried. Uh, we are going to actually we are going to change Pokemon. We don't want to stay in on that physical, uh, right? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure that's what I said in the bio. We want to switch instead to Luna. Now, this is stupid. This is a, a horrible idea. Uh, but I know for a fact that Clefable will outspeed Machamp. And I'm also hoping that a big old Psych... Oh, no! We were able to outspeed it. So I don't know what totally happened there. Maybe our Quick Claw activated? All right. So Machamp is going to use Cross Chop on us. This might kill Clefable. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, yes, it's going to kill Clefable. Well, that's unfortunate. Now, what sucks about that is that Machamp is going to end up switching, uh, is going to end up using a full restore in the next turn, but I'm hoping that, uh, I'm hoping that, oh no, it's going to use a berry. Okay. I forgot that Machamp is carrying a citrus berry. Um, let's use fly. He didn't actually use a full restore. So down goes Machamp, his Pokemon that I was actually terrified of, uh, went down and all we lost was Clefable. Uh, we knew that was gonna happen. I was just hoping that maybe Psychic was gonna do a little bit more damage. Now Bahamut is our highest level uh, Pokemon at level 56. All right, Hitmonlee is now gonna come out. We are going to stay in. I don't think we're gonna outspeed this Hitmonlee, but it's worth trying. Uh, we did outspeed him, great. I'm hoping that this fly will be able to take down this Hitmonlee right away. Now, he did not use Rock Tomb. He actually doesn't have Rock Tomb, so we will be able to take down this Hitmonlee, no problem. One hit, one kill. We have one more Pokemon left. 
one more Pokemon of Brunos, and he's going to finish with his Onix, which is very strange. Uh, we're going to switch, of course, to our Poseidon, who's going to be able to yet again use water, and we'll be able to take care of this Poseidon, uh, this Onix, this Poseidon. Absolutely no problemo. Let's go ahead and use Surf. Goodbye, little Onix. See you, dude. See ya. Down he goes. Elite Four Bruno is taken out. Why? How could I lose? Now, we didn't use Topher, so we don't get that amulet coin bonus, but that's fine. My job is done. Go face your next challenge. And he'll just turn away from us. He's so sad. What a little sad boy. All right, number three of the Elite Four. This is Agatha. Now we find ourselves at Agatha, the love of Professor Oak's life, who's not your mom. Uh, she is going to be a ghost-type trainer, although I would argue that she's more a poison-type trainer. Now, she's going to start off right off the bat with Gengar, a ghost-poison-type Pokemon, obviously one of my favorites. Knows the ability Levitate, meaning that ground is, uh, don't use any ground attacks, it's immune. It knows the moves Confuse Ray, Double Team, Shadow Punch, and Toxic. That Toxic is not going to be an issue because we have full restores and full heals, not really a problem. Nothing that we really have on our team is weak to ghosts, so we'll be okay. I'm pretty sure we can take down this particular Gengar, no problem. Doesn't have that much good abilities. This is actually a very bad Gengar. Now, its weaknesses, it is weak to Ghost, Psychic, and Dark. So, Nidoking is going to be our best chance here. It's going to be immune to that Toxic, and it's going to be able to hit it with Shadow Ball. And I think we'll be able to take down this Pokemon in about one to two hits, depending on how we do. Its next Pokemon is going to be Haunter. Same exact thing. We're going to focus on using Nidoking to take it down. It's got Levitate just like uh, Gengar, and I didn't... I, its ability... I just noticed its ability. I left Ghastly there. It has the moveset Mean Look, Curse, Hypnosis, and Dream Eater. So what this one's going to do is it's going to try to lock you in with Mean Look, put you to sleep, hit you with Curse, finish you with Dream Eater to repair its own damage. That's what, going to be what it's going to try to do. We're going to hit this Haunter with a Shadow Ball first, and I think that we'll be able to one-hit KO this particular Pokemon. Next is going to be Golbat. Golbat is a poison flying type Pokemon who is weak to rock, electric, psychic, and ice. Its special defense is higher than its defense, so I would suggest maybe trying to use a rock type attack. Uh, luckily for us, our Nidoking, yet again, uh, is going to not take a lot of damage from any of his abilities whatsoever, uh, which is good news for us. Now, it does have the ability Inner Focus, so it won't flinch, um, and it knows the moves Confuse Ray, Bite, Air Cutter, and Poison Fang, so Nidoking is going to be a very good counter to this particular Pokemon. Next, we are going to look at Arbok. Yet again, another great Pokemon for uh, our Nidoking to try to take on. It is a pure Poison type, meaning it is weak to ground, so Earthquake from Nidoking is going to hurt it. However, we need to make sure that Nidoking is not the Pokemon that Arbok enters on on, because it has the ability Intimidate, so Intimidate will lower Nidoking's attack, meaning that we will not be able to one hit KO it with an earthquake. If Intimidate doesn't hit us, we will, I think, be able to do that. That Iron Tail will also hurt our Nidoking, King, so we need to make sure that we do this in a, a very quick and easy way. Now, it's her last Pokemon, Agatha's last Pokemon, is actually pretty challenging, and this is Gengar. Uh, again, another obviously Ghost Poison, obviously weak to Ghost, Psychic, and Dark. The problem is, it's, it's a higher level than the other Gengar, so I don't think we'll be able to one or, or even maybe two hit KO this thing. It knows Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, Hypnosis, and Nightmare. What this thing is going to do is it's going to use Hypnosis and Nightmare on you, which takes out a fourth of your HP every turn, and then it's going to hit you with strong stab attacks like Shadow Ball and Sludge Bomb. This thing is going to hurt. Again, our, our best bet is going to be Nidoking. Let's see if Topher can actually win this battle for us. All right. Let's do this. Now that we've seen her team, let's talk to her. I am Agatha of the Elite Four. I hear Oak's taken a lot of interest in you, child. That old Duff was once tough and handsome, but that was decades ago. He's a shadow of his former self. Now he just wants to fiddle with his Pokedex. He's wrong. Pokemon are for battling, Cory. I will show you how a real trainer battles. Bring it, Agatha of the Elite Four. She is number three. One more after this. She has, obviously, my favorite Pokemon in her team. She's going to start with Gengar number one, the first Gengar that I showed you, level 54 female. Now, we have our very own Luna, who's going to start this fight with a big ol' Psychic, hopefully to the face. I'm hoping that this will do tremendous damage. If this doesn't, it's okay. We always have Topher to fall back on. So, this Psychic is not going to be able to kill Gengar, but I'm hoping that this next one will be able to. Uh, Gengar is going to end up using Confuse Ray on us, which is unfortunate, but not a huge deal because we will be switching out of uh, Luna on this turn. Uh, as long as this goes through, Luna's probably going to hit herself right here. I knew it. 
I knew she was. All right. Well, that's okay. We have leftovers. We have leftovers. Not a big deal. We'll be able to kind of kind of brush off that damage. And uh, you saw, uh, it's going to double team. That's not good. Uh, if we miss here or we're hit by, if we hit ourselves, we're going to be running into a big problem here. So Luna is going to hit itself. Oh, no. Not the confusion. Not the confusion hacks. There we go. And we are just getting a full-on evasive, uh, a full-on evasive Gengar here, which is not good. This is what its strategy is going to be. Confuse you, and it's going to use another double team, uh, guaranteed. Uh, this is all it can do, is just use double team. So, let's see. We're just going to keep hitting ourselves. We missed. Oh, no. There we go. We were able to take her down. I sped up that because uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want you guys to have to sit through that. All right, we are going to stay with Luna. Golbat's going to come out next. Now you could obviously easily switch to Topher and kind of be able to withstand that anything that he does. But I'm also curious to see how much Psychic will actually end up doing to uh, this Golbat, just because it doesn't have the best special defense. Uh, a Rock Slide would also hurt it, but that, since it has that Poison subtype, this should also do pretty well. Uh, not quite able to kill it, but pretty close pretty close. I thought I heard something behind me. I got scared. Uh, and it's going to hit us with an air cutter, which is not going to do any damage towards us. Putting Psychic... Oh my god, that crit. Uh, putting Psychic on Luna was actually a very good idea. I'm glad that we did that. So we will go ahead and take down that Golbat. And the next Pokemon that he's going to send... Or she's going to send out is going to be Arbok. So we are going to indeed switch to Topher here. Because Topher has that Earthquake. And I'm... Oh no, I'm wrong! Oh no, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. Guys, I screwed up. I screwed up hard. All right, Arbok has Intimidate, so that's actually going to lower our attack stat. I did not mean to do that. I warned against that in the literal bio for Arbok. Now, this uh, would have one-shot it, but now it's going to probably two-shot it. Unfortunately, Arbok is going to use a full restore. That's totally fine, uh, because obviously we'll, we're faster than it. We're going to kill it no matter what. Full restore is going to be used on Arbok, uh, which is good. That's fine. Um, at least we got a full restore out of the way. We'll be able to use that Earthquake, bring it down to again, and then obviously because it used an item, we'll have another turn to be able to take it down. So not, I'm not like super concerned. Uh, in fact, we're just going to use Shadow Ball just to kind of hit it in the face and take down that little bit more of health. Goodbye, Arbok. Next, we have Haunter. Will we stay in for Haunter? No. We'll stay in. I didn't mean to say it, but we will, uh, because I'm pretty sure one Shadow Ball to the face will be able to kill this Haunter. I'd be super surprised if not. It's level 53, we're level 55. No! Oh no, that's not good at all. Okay. It's going to use Hypnosis, but it missed. This is good news. It's going to use a full Restore. This is bad news, but that's fine, because again, we're faster than it, so we'll be able to hit it twice with the same Shadow Ball. So Shadow Ball once. We definitely won this fight right now, which is amazing. I'm very, very excited to, to see that. And another Shadow Ball, and we'll be able to take down that Haunter. Goodbye, Haunter. All right, that leaves one Pokemon left for the third member of the Elite Four. This is actually going very smoothly. Uh, we only had one KO, which was good. Next is going to be a Gengar. Now, we are going to stay in. This is the Gengar that I warned against, the one that's going to try to put you to sleep and use uh, Nightmare. Now, it's level 58, so it's a little bit stronger than the other one. I'm hoping this will bring it to half, and then our next Shadow Ball is going to be able to hit it. Now, for whatever reason, this Gengar is going to hit us with its own Shadow Ball, um, and that's fine because it's going to at least be a three-hit KO, for this Gengar, whereas for us, it's going to use its Citrus Berry and then a full Restore. This is a problem, and I'm very sad about this. So we're going to again hit it with a Shadow Ball. I don't think Luna would be able to uh, beat this Pokemon. A crit! Oh my god, we, we actually needed that crit. So we got super lucky there. Down goes Gengar. 2,361 Poke Dollars. Oh my, you're something special. And with that, you win. I see what the old Duff sees in you now. I have nothing else to say. Run along now, child. All right, let's run along. Here we go. The last member of the Elite Four. This is, this is cool. This is cool. All right, guys, in the next video, we will beat Pokemon Fire Red. I don't want these episodes to be too long, so I'm going to cut this one here. Thank you very much for watching, and remember, never give up, never surrender.